Chris joins us in the studio now with more. I mean, we would like it to be out there as well. It seems so effective. Why aren't we using it? Well, so at this point, the device is going to enter real-world testing later this year. They're going to have it at two locations. Uh, it'll be about the size of a suitcase. Uh, the goal is to get it down to the size of about an iPhone, something that could be mounted, say, at turnstiles, at train stations, or right at a door as somebody's walking in at an airport, or it could even be worn by a police officer. I mean, that seems like a very obvious solution, but it also makes me wonder, right now, when we go into those places, are dogs the only way that they're able to sniff this out? So dogs are viewed as the gold standard. The issue with the dogs is, like people, you know, they can't go uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and a, a dog is, is pretty invasive. Like, the dog's kind of going to come up and sniff you. What they like about this technology is it could complement the dog by working like a smoke detector always there and always on. The other uh, tool that the TSA use, you've seen them swab people's hands, uh, and when they test that, it's testing for residue like TATP. You know, I think of all of the changes that have affected us as travelers, like we can't have more than three ounces of liquid, and that was in direct response to something. So it just makes me wonder, even if they crack down on TATP, won't, these, won't they just figure out another way to still inflict pain and inflict devastation? In fact, that liquid ban is in part due to TATP concerns. Oh, okay. Um, Yes, you know, cer certainly the terrorists are paying attention, uh, and they will always change their tactics. We've seen that. However, time and again they go back to this because particularly in Europe, uh, there aren't a lot of supplies to build your own explosives. And even in the U.S., if you're going to buy dynamite, we pay attention to that. If C4 goes missing, uh, somebody calls the police. This is made out of things like hydrogen peroxide, things that can be bought at the drugstore and made. It's, it's dangerous to make and it's highly volatile and it doesn't always work or sometimes it goes off when you don't want it to. Uh, but this can be made with things that are legally sold. So that's why there's an appeal here. It's also difficult because you can't even track the sale of these things right. like you could with like drugs, you know, like meth or something, the ingredients that are made there. Exactly. Are we sharing all this information with European counterparts? You know, certainly right now it's, it's still in the proving stages. If the device works the way it does in the lab in the real world, you can bet that it will be, you'll see it in places not just here in the United States but around the world. Did you get some sense of that timeline? Did they give you any? You know, they, they want to get it out there as quickly yeah. as possible. You know, I mean, certainly after Paris uh, had happened, uh, the professor told us he felt like, oh, I wish we could just already have it out there. And certainly they've got to be feeling that again today. So, you know, everybody wants whatever tool they can have. We talked to the ATF for this story as well, and they welcome any, anything that makes it easier to detect one of these explosives. Because, you know, here's the way they envision it working. Somebody walks into an airport. They've got a trace of this on their hands. That sets off the alarm from this sensor, and they're able to, at the very least, you know, respond immediately. So maybe lives are saved or somebody thinks twice about even getting anywhere near a center because they've come in contact with this. It also seems like in terms of just the pocketbook, this is probably a much cheaper of a solution than it is to constantly have dogs who you said get tired, who you have to constantly be trained. You know, I think that what uh, the way it's going to be looked at is one more tool in the toolbox. How do you add that extra layer? When we're talking about transportation security in particular, you, you'll hear experts talk about layers of security. The vetting that goes on when you buy the plane ticket, the vetting that goes on before you get to the airport, as well as the screening. It's one more layer that if you can relatively quickly add, um, you know, particularly if you can do something to address insecurities at things like train stations, uh, because it could just be running mm -hmm. uh, as people walk by it. That's a great additional tool to the things you already have. Fascinating report. Chris Van Cleef, thank you so much. Thank you.